Would everyone please take a seat? Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's council meeting. Could I please have uh, Pastor Philip Jenkins from New Canaan Missionary Baptist Church come forward for the opening prayer? Good evening. Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to be here tonight. We thank you for each and every one that's present. And right now we ask a special prayer on the proceedings of this night's meeting. We pray for the agenda. We pray for all those that are involved. And we want to pray for our city council and city council members. And that everything be done decent and in order. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Commander Rayner, would you lead us in the flag salute? to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I'd like to call to order the City Council meeting of January 20th, 2016. And uh, Director Malney, roll call please. Here. Lewis. Here. Silvera. Here. Stonegrove. Here. Walton. Here. Consideration of approval of agenda. Do I have a motion? Mr. Freya? I move to approve the agenda as submitted. Mr. Silvera? Second. Okay, motion by Freya, second by Silvera to approve the agenda as stated. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? None. Carried. Re reorganization of City Council, selection of Mayor Pro Tem. And uh, at this time, uh, every year this, this is done and we rotate. And at this time, I would like to nominate uh, Mr. Silvera as Mayor Pro Tem. Mr. Silvera? Mr. Mayor, I respectfully decline and uh, ask the, to nominate Councilmember Freya. Keep him on as Mayor Pro Tem. Okay. Um, if that happens, Council, then what we do is still continue with our rotation as it normally would, and then the person next year uh, would then be the, uh, uh, the, um, uh, the mayor pro tem that would normally have been the mayor pro tem. Are there any other nominations? I will close the nominations and I will remove my, um, uh, uh, I just lost it. <laughs> I, will, I will remove my uh, recommendation of uh, Mr. Silvera leaving Mr. Freya. Okay, do I have a second to that? Ms. Lewis. Second the motion. Okay, motion by Silvera, second by Lewis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? None. Carried. Thank you, Mr. Silvera and Mr. Freya, thank you. <coughs> you know, I forgot something. I didn't even ask you. Did I? If you wanted to do it again? Too late. It doesn't matter. Okay, too late. <laughs> okay. Public forum. Members of the public may address the City Council on any item of public interest that is within the jurisdiction of the City Council, which includes agenda and non-agenda items. No action will be taken on non-agenda items and speakers are limited to a five-minute presentation. Detailed guidelines are posted on the Council Chamber informational table. And at this, uh, when you approach the, uh, the podium, please state your name and your city of residence. And if you have a cell phone, please turn them off or place them on vibrate. Okay, is there anyone who would like to speak at the public forum? Oh, wait one minute, Mary. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no problem. You're My good. name is Mary Anderson, and I'm a resident of Los Banos. And I'd like to give information on the Alzheimer's and Dementia Support Group that meets every third Wednesday of the month at noon at Country Waffles. We are current or past caretakers of spouses, family members or friends, and we share our experience of dealing with this dreadful disease or related diseases such as dementia. Some of us have had to place loved ones in a facility because we didn't have the necessary skills or the finances to hire someone to properly care for them. Others kept them at home whenever possible, often with great difficulty. We share our, our, our I'm sorry, we need each of you to share your experiences. There are flyers on the back table and some of the community center if you're aware of anyone who could use our group's help. Thank you for your time. 
Mary, would you please give a copy of that flyer to our um, uh, uh, Director Maloney, please? The little flyers yes. that I put yeah. up there. Or, or Lucy can get one. Is there okay. one back there? There's, I put a little stack of them. Oh, okay. Joy, would you bring one up to Lucy for us, please? Okay, we took care of it, Mary. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak at the public forum? Hello, Mayor and Council, Bertha Faria, Los Banos Chamber of Commerce. I haven't been here a while, so I apologize. You're going to get a whole slew of information. Welcome to 2016, and we are looking forward to a busy and exciting year for the Chamber. Our calendar is shaping up with our annual events as well as community events, which add the vitality to our city. We welcomed our new president, Sandy Lemus, first vice, vice president, Eric Lamone of Republic Services, and second vice president, Rhonda Lowe of The Office City. They bring with them a new energy to grow commun community events and build revenue for the chamber. We also welcomed some new directors, Debbie Perry of Guardian Angels, Eduardo Sandoval of Sandoval Bail Bond, Joy Mendez of Rico Fitzer and Pierce, and Michael Tejas of WFG. We have scheduled our Spring Street Fair for Saturday, April 9th in downtown Los Banos, and we have vendor applications available on our website as well as in our office. We will also participate with our annual beer booth at the Merced County Spring Fair, which begins April 27th, and we look forward uh, in our calendar. We will continue with a Father's Day event on Saturday, June 18th and host a fireworks booth that will open on the 28th of June and continue through the evening of the 4th. And look to hold our Fall Street Fair September 10th and head to our Tomato Festival, which will be held Saturday, October 1st. We also have a full calendar of monthly mixers hosted by our chamber businesses uh, with our first mixer of the year going to be held Thursday, the 28th with Berkshire Hathaway. Some upcoming events for January in the community are a mobile vet counseling center at the American Legion, 8.30 to 2 p.m. These services are offered free to eligible veterans on the first and third Thursday of each month, and it's made possible by our Los Banos VFW. Appointments can be made by calling 559-487-5660. The Los Banos Golden Agers will their dinner will be held tomorrow, January 21st, at the Community Center. These dinners are held on the third Thursday of each month, and dinners are $10 for members. Next week, Las Vanas High School Choirs will hold their annual drive through dinner at La Morenita. That's the 28th. Beginning at 4.30, tickets are available for $10, which include a half chicken, rice, beans, tortillas. And these proceeds help the choir to attend the Central Coast Festival. Tickets are available from choir members or from their director. The Los Banos Kiwanis have also begun their Marie Callender Valentine Pie Sale to benefit their scholarship fund. Pies are $13 each. Deadline is February 8th for pickup on the 12th at the Miller and Lux building. Contact Barbara at 826-7114 or Jim at 769-6703 to place your orders. Then at the end of the month, Green Valley Charter School will host an art show Saturday the 30th, 10 a.m. to 2 at 9476th Street. This show is open to the public and will show the community what Green Valley has to offer and how the arts help integrate learning of other skills. Refreshments and some of the art will be available for purchase. And that covers it for the month. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Breezy, can we uh, put on the uh, public education channel the Mobile Vet Center and also mm -hmm. the uh, Alzheimer's Support Group? Okay, thank you. Eric Lamone, resident of Los Banos, employee of Republic Services. Mine is not nearly as long as Bertha's, so I'll just save that right there. Man, there's a lot of power up here now with Mr. Breezy, and, and I'm, I'm glad to see it. Um, good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council members. I'm here tonight to recognize a local commercial business that is absolutely superb in their recycling efforts. Uh, these individuals have taken the extra step to help our city's efforts to meet our state's mandated diversion goal of 75% by the year 2020. Four years ago, the state of California implemented a mandatory recycling program, state statute AB 341. 
requiring all commercial businesses that generate four yards of waste and multifamily complexes of five units or more to have a recycling program. I'm happy to announce that our Merced County region has now reached 70% of our diversion goal, and we are well ahead of schedule. Doesn't mean quit recycling. Obviously, it's, it's, a, it's a region and not a, and not a city's effort. Um, we, Republic Services, have placed education at the highest level possible. It is in our belief that we must continue to educate our students about the urgency to recycle for a better tomorrow. We have developed an award program that will contribute $500 to the Los Banos School District for a student scholarship program in the name of the winning business recipient. With that, I am proud to present a $500 check to the Los Banos Unified School District uh, and recognize a biannual bi recycling award winner for, for 2015 for Starbucks, Christina, and uh, it's at the East Pacheco Boulevard location. She's not present, so I will not give her award nor a check. Um, however, um, she does owe me a grande white mocha. So, thank you. Thank you. So anyone else who'd like to speak at the public forum? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, and staff. John Cates, a uh, citizen of Los Banos and Planning Commissioner. I just wanted to publicly thank the Mayor and the acknowledgement that uh, you provided on the sixth uh, Council meeting that I was in Georgia for training and I missed. I, I really wanted to be here for that and unfortunately I missed it. But I wanted to sincerely thank the recognition and looking forward to my second term as planning commissioner and uh, look forward to working with all of you to uh, move this city forward and see what we can do to get, get things going here. But I wanted to just give you a public thank you and uh, really appreciate it. It was a council decision. I know. Okay. I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anyone else who'd like to speak at the public forum? Not seeing or hearing anyone, I will now close the public forum and go on to Item 7, Consideration of Approval of Consent Agenda. Items on the Consent Agenda are considered to be routine and will be voted on in one motion unless removed from the Consent Agenda by a City Council member. And tonight we have... Items on the Consent Agenda are as follows. Warrant numbers 157344 through 157486 in the amount of $974,237.03. Minutes for the January 7th, 2000, that should be 16, adjourned City Council meeting. Minutes for the January 12th, 2016, special City Council meeting. City Council resolution number 5719, approving and accepting parcel map number 2015-02, 160 West Santa Barbara Street, APN 081180-004. Village Green Subdivision. City Council Resolution Number 5720, adopting a revised budget for the 2015-2016 fiscal year as it pertains to expenditures in the Special Revenue Fund, Fire Augmentation Professional Services Account. City Council Resolution Number 5721, authorizing the release of unclaimed checks pursuant to California Government Code Section 50055 to the City of Los Banos. City Council Resolution Number 5722, approving an amendment to Division 5K Workers' Compensation Reporting Policy of the City's Policy and Procedures Manual. And the items are to be approved as submitted. All right. Is there any City Council member who would like to remove an item for discussion? Mr. Silvera. Uh, no, Mayor, if, if there isn't anybody, I would like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda as stated by Director Malley. Okay. Mr. Freya? Second. Motion by Silvera, second by Freya to approve the agenda as stated. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? None carried. Okay. Let's go on to item eight. Consideration of the adoption of City Council Resolution Number 5723 accepting the 2014-2015 fiscal year audit reports consisting of a comprehensive annual financial report, CAFR, the Government Auditing Standards Report, and the Transportation Development Act Program Financial Statements. And for this, we're going to go to Finance Director Williams. 
Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Tonight, staff is recommending that City Council receive and adopt the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, otherwise known as the CAFR, and the accompanying reports that the Mayor just mentioned. Um, the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report communicates the City's financial condition and activities for the year ending June 30, 2015. The quality of the Finance Department's work and the CAFR is measured by, in two ways. First, by receiving a clean audit from the independent auditors who are here tonight, and second, by being awarded the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting by the GFOA. Um, we did apply for this award in 2014, and as we have stated before, we were proud that we did receive the award. We have applied, applied for it again in, with this CAFR that you're about to um, go over this evening. Um, we are anticipating that we meet all the program requirements again, and we will be notified later this year with the results. And of course, when we find out, we'll bring that information to Council. Um, but before we present the reports, I would like to say thank you to all my staff, including Kim, Rosemary, and Martha, who are here tonight. They work very hard, not just when the audit comes around, but throughout the whole entire year to make sure that we have a successful audit, and they do an exceptional job. Um, also, I'd like to thank Christy Miller. She's on the audit team, and she worked with staff, and we're happy to have her here. Uh, she does a wonderful job. And we really appreciate it. Um, but here tonight is Fausto, a managing partner with Price Page and Associates, to give a brief review of the audit and the CAFR. Council members, I did hear that brief, to, so I, I, I picked up on that. Uh, my pleasure to be uh, with you tonight, and, and I do plan to be brief. However, as I go through this presentation, if there are, if there are any questions that you have, please feel free to interrupt me as I go through this or, or hold any questions to the end, whatever your preference might uh, be. Uh, so I'd like to start with the Independent Auditor's Report, which is uh, page one. This is really a small book, 108 pages. Um, the Independent Auditor's Report basically describes financial statements that were audited for the year end of June 30, 2015. But then also, it also talks about management's responsibility and the auditor's responsibility. So management's responsible for the preparation and fair presentation of the financial statements. Management's also responsible for internal control. Um, and so our job as auditors, we're not a part of your internal control structure. Um, you have a governance responsibility and you engage us to do an audit in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards, also in accordance with government uh, auditing standards. So we've conducted that audit. Our job then is to perform tests of transactions, of account balances, to uh, assess risk. And although we're not a part of your internal control system, our job from an audit perspective is to obtain an understanding of the design and operation of internal control. What that means is that we will walk through various internal control processes and determine whether your controls are designed effectively. And if, if uh, the controls are designed effectively, then we will walk through those controls to determine whether what we think should be happening is actually happening. So we do that in order to assess risk. Our job as auditors is to assess risk. Where might there be either errors or where might fraud occur? And so we have a brainstorming meeting at our office. Um, myself, an audit uh, manager or supervisor, along with uh, Christy, who is a senior, and our staff people. And so before we ever show up to the city, we're already having this conversation. Uh, and we audit multiple cities and some counties, so we have some experience in this area. But our, again, our job is to try to think about what could go wrong, because the audit is designed uh, effectively to determine whether there is any material error or whether there is any significant fraud. And so that is how we design our audit procedures. Um, uh, as has already been reported, uh, I'm glad to just share again that you have received an unmodified opinion. An unmodified opinion uh, also can be called a clean opinion. Basically, it states that your financial statements are in fact presented fairly in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. The Governmental Accounting Standards Board issues rules, and your financial statements need to be prepared in accordance with those rules. And so our job is to determine whether the financial statements, whether the numbers are presented properly in accordance with those rules. An unmodified opinion then means, yes, your financial statements are fairly stated. Um, and so we also issued uh, a separate opinion that's called an opinion in accordance with a report uh, on internal control and compliance in accordance with government auditing standards. 
So your audit is not done only in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards, which are the standards issued by the American Institute of CPAs, but also government auditing standards, which are issued um, by the uh, Government Accountability Office. Uh, and uh, as a part of the audit, we need to determine whether there is any uh, significant non-compliance that might be material to the financial statements and what impact that might have. And so uh, a, a result of our audit, and not only is to issue the audit opinion, but then also to make you aware of any significant deficiencies or material weaknesses in internal control or any material non-compliance. I'm pleased to report that we identified no significant deficiencies or material weaknesses in internal control and also no matters of compliance um, that should cause any concern. So I don't plan to go through the financial statements in any detail. Again, th this is a book. I'm glad to maybe point out just a couple of things that are changed and different from prior years. So if we can go to page 14, one of the big numbers that's on these financial statements that wasn't there in the past is towards the bottom of page 14, about the second or third line up, it says net pension liability. So there is, uh, a, in that total column, you'll see a number, $14.3 million. Uh, and so what that represents is your share of pension liability related to the PERS plans that you are in. So as you know, you're in a cost-sharing plan with PERS, and your share of that total liability is $14 million. In prior years, this liability was not reported because uh, it wasn't required. So the Governmental Accounting Standards Board issued a new pronouncement, said effective for years ended June 30, 2015. This liability should be reported. And so there it is on your financial statements, $14 million. There is a detailed footnote with respect to that liability. Um, oh, it's note 10, and it goes for probably five or six pages. So we're not going to go into any detail with respect to that, other than maybe if we can take a quick peek at page 62 um, that shows what your liability is. So it, it, it um, shows the, the numbers that, that we just uh, went over. And, and there's a little table there at the bottom of page 62 that... This liability is an estimate, right? Actuaries calculate this, these numbers. So based on your current, the current discount rate at PERS, it shows a liability for your miscellaneous plan of $7 million, for your safety plan of about $7 million. However, if the discount rate changed at PERS, if it went down to 6.5%, so they plan on a 7.5% uh, you know, uh, investment rate. If that went down and they only made 6.5%, you can see what would happen to the liability. Rather than being $7 million, it'd go to $11.7 million. Um, and in the safety, it'd go from 7 uh, also to almost to over $11 million. Now, if, if the 7.5% rate is too conservative and, in fact, returns are greater than that and, and they made 8.5%, then certainly the liability goes way down. But this is, I, I think, just significant so that... Um, Governments can know and uh, how not just not how that's calculated because again that's a big complex calculation but that what would appear to be minor and significant changes in the in their calculation could have a drastic uh, impact on you. So um, I think that was the big significant change in the financial statements um, uh, last year. I think I talk a little bit about the general fund and how to read that financial statement and went over the uh, couple of the enterprise funds. So I don't plan to do that again because uh, time is uh, short tonight. But uh, I'm glad to answer any questions you might have. Again, my purpose was really to describe the audit process and what we did uh, and not so much to go into detail with respect to the numbers because I know that uh, you receive a very good current financial information. Um, I also would like to express our gratitude to uh, Sonia and to Kim for their assistance in the process. As Christy and I were driving here tonight, we were talking about how clean your audit is. So from an audit perspective, I mean, we we'll give you a clean opinion, but a lot, a lot of organizations might receive clean opinions after posting five, six, seven, ten, fifteen audit adjustments. In your case, we had no audit adjustments. So there really is a very uh, sound structure here in place, and, and so I think that's uh, certainly a credit to, to your finance team and, and also um, to other management uh, and um, to City Council for overseeing a, an operation that is running this well. Thank you. Uh, are there any comments by uh, council members at this time? Well, uh, oh, Mr. Freer, you go. Go ahead. I just want to compliment our staff. Thank you for the excellent presentation. And thank you, sir. Compliment and thank our staff 
they give us a monthly report, financial report, and uh, they, they've been just doing an outstanding job, and we really appreciate it, and this demonstrates just how, how good a job they do, and Absolutely. appreciate it very, very much. Thanks. Thanks. I can't tell you how much I, uh, number one, thank you for, for coming here tonight and saying what, what, you, uh, what you had to say. Uh, I think the public needs to hear this, and they need to hear it on a regular basis. Uh, public, it's no accident that this happens. It's not an accident. It's, it's the result of hard work by a hardworking team, and this team functions well together. With having a budget that we have in the city of Los Banos not only comes from a lot of hard work, but it comes from a lot of hard decisions. This city is probably in the best financial shape per citizen that I know of. We have a reserve, and we have a, we have a pretty substantial reserve, but that doesn't mean that that reserve can stay the way it is because we have infrastructure reserve, we have operational reserve, and these are some of the things that we're going to be reviewing at our mid-year uh, our, our mid uh, budget uh, review. And then we'll find out if there's any additional money to do added projects after making sure that the city is running well. And I think Sometimes when I'm asked about the budget and why can't you do this and why can't you fund that, I see you have a reserve. Well, there are long-range plans, five to ten years, that uh, the city and uh, the staff have laid out, and we're trying to accomplish those five and ten-year plans. Then there is aging infrastructure. And as you saw last year, uh, Mr. Fachin came to us because we had a, a burst in a, in a water pipe and, uh, and that cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars to fix because our infrastructure is over 100 years old. So we're going to have expenses and we have to make sure that we have the budget in order to take care of those expenses. So without belaboring, because I don't want my report longer than yours, um, I, I, I just want to say thank you to the staff of Los Banos for for the ability to have uh, to have the money when we need this money. So thank you again to all of you, and you did your job. You came here to find out if there are any flaws, and you found none. And so we are we are very happy with that, Mrs. Lewis. Thank you. Uh, Sonia, I also want to thank you and your staff for the diligent and hard work that you do continually. Thank you for the audit that you've done. I know um, it, it was pleasing to me to hear that uh, other cities come up with a clean report, but without a lot of coaching and work uh, probably on your organization's part. Um, and I want to thank our staff uh, for the conservative watching of our finances. Uh, certainly things are beginning to turn around in the economy of Los Banos, but you know, I, I'm a little bit on the conservative side and I, I'm kind of looking at the stock market as it's fluctuating in this day and time and we don't know what tomorrow holds. So I want to thank you for safeguarding our finances and um, continue to walk in that direction and it's, um, we just have to take it a day at a time with some things because you just don't know what tomorrow holds. I mean, we didn't expect our economy to go belly up back in 2008. And um, I'm glad that our staff has worked so hard to help um, bring us out of that state that we were in and getting us to where we are now. So thank you again, Sonia, for what you do. Thank you. Mr. Silvera. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I, I too want to pass the congratulations on to our staff because I do think they do good work. Um, I know that I've said this before year over year that when I first came here, these audit reports were lengthy and there was numerous, numerous findings and I've seen it go from a bunch of findings down to clean reports. And so 
that's good. That's to me. It we always need to be cautious of. It. We always need to keep an eye on it. That's why we hire auditors to come in and check it every year. But it's one of those things that I, I can put on my list of things that I can, I can take it, take it. That that's going to be done well. They, they're they have a proven track record there. All the girls in the finance department. Uh, thank you to all you guys. So, Mr. Mayor, if there aren't any other comments, I'd like to. Oh, make, we still have some oh, comments. I'm sorry. There, oh. Okay, uh, one other thing I, I want to mention before, Mr. S you sure, Mr. Stonger, have anything? Well, I'll okay. Second and, and I'll oh, okay. All right. Uh, one other thing I, I wanted to let him know is that you mentioned pension funding, yeah. and and in talking to Sonia, we have a, a pretty high rate of funding too for our uh, for our pension, and and that's always a good thing because when the pension funding gets down low, that means the city has to contribute more and the employees have to contribute more to the funding. Uh, in order to make sure that the pension is alive and well. But uh, this city has also uh, uh, done a great job in, in, man in, in uh, managing uh, the fund. Uh, so there is a, a substantial amount of money in the pension fund when, when employees go to retire. And they're counting on that money to uh, to make sure that they can, uh, uh, they can have the, the life that they had with, with their retirement. And as Mrs. Lewis mentioned, this was just an okay economy. It wasn't a great economy. It was an okay economy, and they amassed this kind of money. So just two things I wanted to mention. So we have a motion by Mr. Silvera and Mrs. Stonegrove. I, I need to make the motion. Oh, you didn't. Uh, okay. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to adopt City Council Resolution Number 5273, accepting the 2014-15 fiscal year audit reports consisting of the comprehensive annual financial report, CAFR, the government auditing standards report, and the Transportation Development Act program financial statements. Okay, it's 5723. Did I say something different? I'm sorry. Okay. Maybe correct that to 5723. Thank you. Mrs. Stonegrove? I'll second that motion, and I also want to echo the sentiments of the council and thank Sonia and her staff, Martha, Kim, and Rosemary for... Um, another excellent audit. We appreciate all the work you do and are very fortunate to have all of you. Thank you. Okay. It's been motioned by Silvera, second by Stone Grove, to ex uh, accept uh, uh, consideration of adoption of City Council Resolution number 5723, as read by title. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? None. Carried. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Let's go on to item 9, public hearing. If you challenge a proposed action as described here in in court, you may be limited to raising only those issues you or someone else raised at the public hearing described herein or in written correspondence delivered to the city at or prior to the public hearing. Item 9A, public hearing. To receive public comment and consideration of an ordinance imposing an express ban on marijuana cultivation, marijuana processing, marijuana delivery, and marijuana dispensaries in the city of Los Banos. Item 9A1. Ordinance number 1142, imposing an express ban on marijuana cultivation, marijuana processing, marijuana delivery, and marijuana dispensaries in the city of Los Banos. This is second reading and adoption. And uh, do we have a staff report? Okay, City Attorney Vaughn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, city Council. Uh, this is the second time this matter has been before you. It was here two weeks ago. We had a public hearing. And at that public hearing, you waived the first reading and you introduced the, the ordinance. Uh, we're going to go through the PowerPoint briefly tonight. Not quite as briefly as the gentleman before me, but we're, we're going to try. Um, the marijuana ordinance uh, does exactly what that slide says it does. It's an express ban on cultivation, processing, delivering, and dispensaries in the city of Los Banos and con in conjunction with medical marijuana. Um, just a brief review and background. We, I know we went through this last time, but I think it's important to understand. Um, 1996, uh, the California voters through uh, Proposition 215 uh, adopted or passed the Compassionate Use Act of 1996. And basically what that did is it uh, took care of and it wiped out criminal uh, prosecutions and violations uh, relating to possession, cultivation of medical marijuana for patients and primary caregivers. Um, did not wipe out the federal law, which to this day still provides that uh, possession and use of marijuana and sales is illegal on, uh, on a federal front. In 2003, some cleanup legislation came around, and what that legislation did, it's the MMP, 
it established a vol voluntary identification program where certain folks who are eligible were issued identification cards uh, and certified as qualified patients and primary caregivers. And that's kind of been the, the process uh, to date is you get a get your primary or you get your qualified patient card and your marijuana card and you're off and running in terms of getting a prescription for medical marijuana. Uh, and in, in subsequent to that and in response to that and the cities were trying to figure out after that how to how to really deal with medical marijuana dispensaries and their jurisdictions and in 2006 uh, this city council adopted ordinance number 1028, which uh, prohibited medical marijuana dispensaries in all zoning districts within the city. And that was done through the zoning powers and the police authority of the city of Los Banos in determining what type of uses it was going to allow in particular districts within the city. And that, um, that was kind of the trend in 2006 amongst cities was to exercise that zoning power to either prohibit dispensaries or to regulate dispensaries. Just as a note, those that regulated dispensaries, some of them got into a little bit of trouble with the federal government uh, concerning uh, medical marijuana still being a federal crime. Um, that was, uh, in 2006, that was kind of uh, forward thinking and there were a number of cases that went up on appeal into the appeals court and in fact uh, affirmed that cities had the power through their police authority and their zoning powers to determine that uh, medical marijuana dispensaries uh, could be prohibited within their districts uh, in their cities. So that leads us to current and in October of 2015 Governor Brown signed a trio of bills uh, into law. Uh, one of them Assembly Bill 266, Assembly Bill 243, and Senate Bill 643. And these are known as the Medical Marijuana Regulation and Safety Act. And it's basically a complete overhaul of medical marijuana as we know it in the state of California. And it became effective January 1, 2016. Um, it essentially governs the licensing and control of the medical marijuana business in the state of California. And it uh, continues to provide criminal immunity for licensees just like the Compassionate Use Act did of 1996. So it's not changing that, but what it's doing is it's trying to close up the loop on the business of medical marijuana. And so Assembly Bill 266 establishes a dual licensing structure for medical marijuana businesses, which would be dispensaries, delivery services, and cultivation, commercial cultivation. And what Assembly Bill 266 says, briefly, is that you have to have a dual license if you want to engage in one of those businesses. And a dual license, both from the jurisdiction that you're uh, planning on having that activity in, such as the city of Los Banos. And once, you're, once you get that license, you then are eligible for a state license. So it's kind of a dual licensing structure uh, regarding uh, the business of medical marijuana in the state of California as, pursuant to Assembly Bill 266. Um, Assembly Bill 243, all these bills do a little bit different in their little kind of piece of the pie on medical marijuana. They're, there's some overlapping, but they took kind of aim at different uh, areas of medical marijuana. This one establishes Assembly Bill 243. It's, it's aimed at the cultivation of medical marijuana. And it's going to be administered by the Department of Food and Agriculture. And it's... Um, very complex and it goes into the use of pesticides and all kinds of things in terms of cultivation, pollution, water pollution, all those kinds of things. And um, it's, a very, it's a very significant law in terms of the environment of uh, cultivation. And one of the interesting things in that law is that uh, it states that if cities do not enact by March 1st uh, uh, regulations or uh, a ban on cultivation, 
that it will automatically be preempted by the state's uh, authority, which is this very complex uh, regulating regulations of the actual cultivation of medical marijuana. So that's what 243 does. Um, Senate Bill 643 then goes on and takes a takes a swing at the medical marijuana doctoring business, and it takes a look at and regulates physicians, and uh, it's going to be quite significant in terms of how physicians can write prescriptions and who they write them for and how many they write and so on and so forth. And uh, this bill goes on to recognize the local authority of cities to to levy taxes and fees on uh, on medical marijuana businesses. So, um, as uh, Chief Breezy mentioned in his report last week, uh, there are a number of adverse uh, effects of the medical marijuana business that and impacts to public health and safety. He went through them uh, quite thoroughly last time, but suffice it to say there are a number of, uh, however many good things there might be with medical marijuana, there are uh, a number of uh, negatives, and those negatives are listed there from odors and violence and trespassing and theft and robbery, fire hazards, some of which, if not all of those, which have been experienced uh, here in Los Banos and in Merced County. Um, so the reason we're bringing this to you now is because of the urgency of getting something done before March 1st, 2016. Uh, and without that action, uh, part of your authority will be preempted by the state of California. Now, there is a a cleanup legislation that's winding its way through that, that might change that, but as of tonight, that has not happened. Um, and so staff is of the opinion that we, didn't want, we do not want the state of California to be the sole licensing authority for medical marijuana, commercial mar medical marijuana, within the boundaries of the city of Los Banos. Um, so uh, what this... Uh, what this ordinance does is that it essentially uh, bans uh, commercialization of medical marijuana within the boundaries of the city of Los Banos. There will be no delivery businesses in or out of the city of Los Banos, be no commercial cultivation of medical marijuana in the city of Los Banos. There will be no dispensaries or processing of medical marijuana within the city of Los Banos. And all, for all of those reasons stated in that slide there. Um, Currently, you have a uh, through your zoning code, and this is a zoning code. We're not criminalizing medical marijuana uh, through this proposed ordinance. Uh, it'll still be decriminalized uh, if, if you're following the medical marijuana rules and you have your prescription and so on and so forth. But what we're doing is through our land use authority, uh, the, the ordinance is going to say the commercialization of medical marijuana is not going to happen in the city of Los Banos. So, it, uh, again, in all zoning districts within the city of Los Banos, dispensaries, delivery, cultivation, and processing will not be licensed and will not be allowed uh, through our licensing, and it will result in uh, criminal, or not criminal penalties, excuse me, civil penalties and potential for su civil nuisance uh, relief uh, to keep those activities from occurring. So this was all rolled out to the Planning Commission on December 9th. Um, they approved it by a vote of, I believe it was five to one, to approve the recommendation of this ordinance to the City Council. Um, like I said, on January 6th, the this same ordinance was introduced, took quite a bit of public testimony, and it was in, the first reading was waived and introduced. Uh, what we're asking you to do tonight is open the public hearing, receive any testimony, uh, close the public hearing, uh, waive the second reading, and adopt Ordinance Number 1142 as written. I'm here to answer any questions. Uh, Commander Rain is here to answer any questions, should you have any. And I think that concludes the presentation for tonight. All right. Are there any questions of uh, Council at this time? 
Right. I will open the public hearing to receive public comment and consideration on, or on ordinance number 1142, imposing an express ban on marijuana cultivation, marijuana processing, marijuana delivery, and marijuana dispensaries in the city of Los Banos. Is there anyone who would like to speak at the public hearing? It's Mayor and City Council, Pastor Phil Jenkins, Pastor New Caney Missionary Baptist Church here in town. Uh, along with pastoring, I work for Merced Union High School District as an intervention specialist. And I work with your high school students from freshmen to seniors that are uh, up for expulsion for um, substance abuse on campus, either being caught under the influence or selling or possession. And uh, <clears throat> didn't know that this was here tonight, but while I'm here, I'm going to say that if Los Banos can, as you really consider, um, I think there's something you should really, really uh, fight against. Uh, our young people are seeing that this is being uh, in other cities, other states that are approving, and so it's it's a hard fight keeping it off our school campuses um, uh, to cause our young people to see that there's nothing wrong with it especially marijuana. Uh, it's a medical, it's natural. Uh, we hear it all. I hear it every day. I work Monday through Friday, and I'm, like I said, I, I, I intervention dispatcher, so I'm teaching and dealing with high school students on a daily basis, and it is bad. So if law Spanish can stay ahead of the game um, <clears throat> and, and do the best you can uh, in keeping it and keeping businesses like that out of law Spanish, um, uh, you will uh, do a great service to the city of Los Banos. Uh, and I'm just saying firsthand, I know what I see on a daily basis. And I'm working with those students now. It's one of those bittersweet positions. I'm glad I'm there, but I hate to see them there. Uh, so if we can uh, stay ahead of that game, please do so. Thank you, Pastor. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak at the public hearing? Not seeing or hearing anyone, I will now close the public hearing and bring it back to council level. And uh, any comments by council members, or, or do I have a motion? Mr. Freya. If there's no further comment, I will move to waive the second reading of Ordinance 1142, as read by title. Mrs. Lewis. Second the motion. Motion by the Freya, second by Lewis to... Uh, I mean, excuse me, yeah, I'm the last one. Thank you. To waive the second reading of ordinance number 1142. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? None. Carried. Mr. Freya. I'll now move to adopt ordinance number 1142 as read by title. Mrs. Lewis. Second. Motioned by Freya, second by Lewis, to uh, adopt ordinance number 1142. Roll call vote, Director Maloney. Maria? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Silvera? Yes. Stongo? Yes. Colota? Yes. Motion carried. Let's go on to item 10, advisement of public notices, and there is no report this evening. Is that correct? I just agree that I can, I can do that under the city manager's report if you'd like. Oh, well, go ahead and do it now. It's all right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I do apologize that these public notices were not included in your agenda, um, and I'll make sure that doesn't happen in the future. But um, we do have three notices. The first one is a conditional use permit for evolution collision. Uh, this would be for the location at 930 G Street, and what their request is for uh, the operation of a spray booth for an auto restoration business. The second public hearing is for a conditional use permit for a Type 23 alcohol license. Uh, this is for uh, Parezo Brewery, located at 80 West G Street. And um, the alcohol license is for a small beer manufacturer who's requesting the use of an on-site tasting room. 
Um, the use of a um, small brewery is actually a permitted use by right in the industrial district, but to have the use of the tasting room, they do need a conditional use permit, and they will be um, not only having a tasting room, but also the ability to sell retail uh, their beer that they're manufacturing on site. Uh, that will be regulated by ABC, but the city of Los Banos will also have our own conditions and regulations as well. And then the last public hearing item is for vesting tentative tract map number 2015-04. This is for the Racquet Club Estates. This is an existing, um, a previously existing subdivision uh, in the city of Los Spanis. Where this is located is adjacent to the, the Racquet Club Fitness um, Center on Racquet Club Drive. Currently, right now, there is um, improvements there. You see a street, a vacant street there. Um, there is fencing, a stucco wall, and a wooden wall. This was a map that was previously approved back in 2000, and the property owner, um, since that time, um, let the map expire, but they have come back to see if they can get the map reapproved, uh, just as it was previously approved for. So it's for 14 uh, single-family residential lots in the medium density zoning district. Uh, this public hearing notice, as, as well as the two others, will be presented to the Planning Commission on Wednesday, January 27th at 7 p.m. here in the Council Chambers. And that concludes my public hearing notices. Thank you. Let's go to the city manager report, Mr. Breezy. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, thank you very much. Um, I will start out by saying it is an honor, um, a great honor for me to sit up here amongst all of you again. Um, it's already challenging, I will tell you that, but I'm surrounded by the people that you see here that are my fellow employees and department heads, and as much as a challenge as it is, um, it's going to be a great time, and we're going to have some some uh, we're going to get some fantastic things accomplished because we do and we are surrounded by such great employees so i want to say thank you for that um, the it department and public works are working together to improve the quality of some of the televisions here at the council meeting to make us look a little bit more hd um, as this process goes along we hope to have it up and running for the next council meeting but rick and some staff from public works are working to improve the quality of the picture that you see, especially when we do the PowerPoint presentations. It may end up, might end up changing some of the appearance of the TVs as far as what is being viewed when we're not doing PowerPoints or presentations, but we've got to get through that. And um, it's, a, it's just a, we're dealing with some old systems there, but we're working hard on that to get that accomplished. And last, I too would like to thank Rosemary and Kim. They're out in the audience. I see Martha over there and Sonia for the great work with their CAFR report. They are very tedious. As a department head, I can say very easily that they are tedious at their job. They look over and cross every T, dot every I to make sure that the city's finances are in order, and they do an outstanding job at it. So I, too, express my thanks for them. And that is all I have tonight, Mayor. Thank you. I kind of like the fuzzy look. It doesn't show some of my wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough of that. All right, City Council Member Reports. Tonight we'll start with Mr. Freya. Uh, uh, Rick, if you have a de-aging system there, it'll be great. Uh, the uh, uh, just uh, choir fundraiser next week, twenty uh, eighth, um, chicken, uh, half chicken dinner, and beans, rice, and tortillas, la moranita. Uh, we use their, we do the drive through their, through their, uh, through their store in the back there. They're very generous. Um, also, our firemen cook the chickens, and they're very generous with their time and effort as well. So. Typical of Los Banos, we have a lot of things going on for kids here, and the only reason they happen is because the citizens of the town, the businesses in the town, are so generous with their time and their money to make it all happen, and we appreciate it very much. Have a great evening. Okay, let's go on to Mrs. Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to uh, congratulate uh, Gary Breezy for his appointment as our interim city manager here in Los Banos. And I'm sure you'll have a lot on your plate to get, uh, get us through as far as projects that we're working on right now. Uh, I feel that you're capable of handling this, and um, you look, I look forward to working with you. And that's it this evening, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Silvera. Yeah, I'd like to like to congratulate um, Gary and uh, I'm looking forward to moving the ball forward. I don't, 
you know, we're going to, this process, we're going to adjourn to closed session right after this, and we're starting the process of looking for uh, a permanent city manager, and I don't know how long that's going to take. I know we have a timeline out there, a pretty aggressive timeline that we're hoping to keep to, but um, we'll see how that works out. So my my biggest concern all along uh, when with the, Mr. Kerrigan's departure is, is, so moving the city forward, we, we, we have no time to just sit back and uh, we don't need placeholders because there's going to be things that are going to be coming our way over the next six to eight months. Um, decisions are going to have to be made on projects. Um, and I just, I just want to keep moving forward, and I think you're going to do an excellent job with that. Uh, and so, uh, again, I want to congratulate the finance staff. It is, it is it's, it's just, it's nice. It's a nice feeling. It's one... A uh, less thing as a council person that you have to focus all your time on is our finance stuff. Um, it's it's smooth sailing. So I remember these meetings when we did these audits, taking hours to go through them. So that is kudos to you guys, Martha, Sonia, Kim, and Rosemary. Thank you guys so much. And that's all I have. Thank you. This is Stone Grove. Thank you. I too just want to welcome. Um, Gary Breezy back again. Uh, thank you for stepping up to be our interim city manager and looking forward to working with you for the next few months in this role again as we pursue our search for our new permanent city manager. And that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you. The, um, um, this last weekend was uh, uh, Martin Luther King's birthday, and we had a march here starting at City Hall and then uh, uh, down um, 6th Street, turning on, um, see if I can do this better than uh, Pastor Bruce Rivers, and then turning on I Street, and then turning down 5th uh, Street uh, over to the uh, the Art Center, uh, where a number of topics were covered on Dr. Martin Luther King. And for the organizers, thank you for doing that, uh, because, these again, these events don't happen for children. They don't happen for adults unless people uh, step up and, uh, and, and put these events together. So without it, it's just not going to happen. So thank you for doing that. Uh, again, Gary, welcome. Uh, Sonia and your team, thank you so much for what you've done, all of you. Can't say enough good things that, uh, of what you've done for, uh, for this city and to keep it financially sound. And uh, Mr. Silvera, thank you for, uh, for mentioning about moving forward because uh, we didn't hire an interim placeholder. We've got to move these projects forward. We have a projects list, and uh, and that list is on everyone's mind, and we are going to move these projects forward until uh, they are completed or we can't move them any fo forward anymore. Uh, so, and I hope that doesn't happen, but uh, but we are here to make sure that, uh, that that's going to happen, and, um, and uh, we have some great plans for Los Banos, but we need everyone working together. So, uh, so Chief, uh, when you go to bed at night, think about that. <laughs> so other than that, I, I would like to uh, adjourn to closed session, public employee employment, city manager, pursuant to government code section 54957. If there's anything to report, we will do so at the end of closed session.